All right. <laughs> Let me get the mic. Yeah, where are the mics, you know? We are a loud voice, you know, we can talk with our mics. That's definitely... That's Hello, definitely everybody, true. and welcome to Geopolitics E-Conflict Show. So excited to be with you. I know uh, we didn't do the show on Tuesday. You know, there's some issues at home, but that's the past, and well, we're here. I, so. I mean, we. I'm. I'm. I feel comfortable saying it. Um, the of, dog passed away. Yes. You know, one of my my dogs, yeah. who you guys typically see, kind of come in their little faces. Uh, he passed away last week, and it was very challenging for us. So, so. yeah. But a anyway, we're here. We're excited. That's what matters. So. What are we going to be talking about today? All right. So and we got, I know there's a lot I know, going on in oh, the world. Oh, my God. We got a crazy lineup today. So the first is that, you know, we talk about China uh -huh. and Chinese investment in Africa. Well, it turns out that Chinese investment in Africa is, ask, is actually dropping. Wow. Yes. That's interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. And the reasons why are also very interesting. The second is that Zelensky is back in town. He's he's in uh, the U.S. Should Asked, I watch my pocket? You should absolutely <laughs> watch your wallet. Uh, and that there is actually a very big debate uh -huh. here in the United States, a very big debate here in the United States about whether we should continue to provide U uh, aid to Ukraine to the tune of $24 billion. So Heck that's on the no. table right now. Yeah, we'll dive into that. Mm. Also very interesting. Then maybe one of the biggest moves since the war in Ukraine began. Yeah. That is that Poland has just announced that they are pulling away from giving more weapons to Ukraine. Wow, that's interesting. That's a 360 Poland has been their number one advocate yeah. and now they are pulling they are, they absolutely declared that they are not giving arms to Ukraine they've anymore. Had they've, they've had, had it. it. Yeah. About time. About they've time. had it. And some of the things that the Polish president said are pretty seething. So we'll dive into that. Yeah. And then something that is also very interesting is Azerbaijan launched a major ground operation against Armenians, against the Armenians. Yeah. Which, so, by the way, just as of yesterday, mm -hmm. they halted. They was halted as Perfect. of yesterday. Yeah. So uh, this is nothing new. This has been going for a long time. So we will dive in. Into it's going for a long, it's been going for a long time, but it's interesting yeah. that, you know, as sort of major conflicts are taking the center stage, these smaller all conflicts of sudden, all yeah. of a sudden are coming up. Why is Which that? Is the question, okay, you know, is there another, as one of the uh, comments I, I read, small prints, mm -hmm. footprints elsewhere? Exactly, we'll, we'll talk about exactly. this one, so. Well, good. Well, let's, let's get on into... Uh, addressing China mm -hmm. and investments in Africa. So uh, now there are those who are saying, well, you know, China is taking over Africa. It's nonsense. Mm -hmm. It is nonsense. It's because it's the business approach to it. Africans yeah. are more receptive to the Chinese presence than it is to the Western presence. And well, we all know why. Yeah, yeah absolutely. exactly. Absolutely. That's the key word to it. The reason also this colonialism didn't give an opportunity to Africans to prosper. Yeah. It's their own resources. Absolutely. I mean, you look at like last time, I remember uh, when, what's his name? Charles of England became yeah. that thing with the, gold, with the diamond. Where all that's coming from, you know? That's then a great question. Where did that come yeah, from? It's the question. I mean, I always said to myself, Really, if he wants to go down in history as great king, yeah. he should do the right thing and return the stolen diamonds and mm -hmm. gold to its proper owners. You know, and it's amazing how comfortable we in the Western world are with that kind of thing, right? Yeah. So I, I remember I was reading the wealth that the Windsor family, so Queen Elizabeth, oh. <laughs> um, you know, the, the wealth that they had accumulated. Uh -huh. And I remember reading that uh, she she collectively they owned all of the gold mines in scotland and i remember thinking is that okay that one right. one family, family owns. owns all of the gold mines in yeah. a in a country 
It's not right. And and so, you know, but it's okay somehow, right? It's okay that that all of these jewels, all this wealth kind of came off the backs of people it's that are enough. more or less living in abject poverty yeah. who don't have clean water, who don't have reliable access to food. Is that is that okay? And how are we comfortable because there's celebrities, right? Yeah. Because more or less they're celebrities. Why? Why is that okay? Actually, yeah. you know, I, I never felt comfortable with that. I mean, yeah, I always wonder about the British citizens. Not that it's their country; they can do whatever. But I quite never understood that knowingly they know that part of their taxes go to uh, supporting the royal family. I kind of got an issue with that. But I again, don't think they need it, support. I, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. It, it's not my country. It's it's yeah. theirs. They can do whatever they want. But of course. It just of doesn't course. make sense. But to me, that's just to, to highlight the point here. If really King Charles wants to do mm -hmm. something good in yeah. his life, you know, this is something at least he could have, yeah. you know, been remembered for that. He was the king that turned yeah. the stolen items so it's a rightful yeah that, that rebalance the scales a little yeah, bit i doubt because, it I you know doubt it. right now there's the big conversation of like this isn't really a, a, a war between you know people's the different types yeah. of people right i'll say that it's youtube i'll say it that yeah, way yeah. but that it really is between the people who have everything and then the rest of us right. yeah the small small percentage because it's not even one percent anymore the tiny percentage of more or less the global elites that own most of everything and the rest of us and to balance it out a little bit yeah. wouldn't take that much. Well, people need you know? people need also to wake up. I mean, yeah. you look at for us here in the U.S. how numb uh, some of us have become to what's absolutely. going on. So, but, absolutely, but absolutely, you're absolutely right. But so to go back to this point of Africa, you know, the reason I think I think, and this is my opinion, I could be yeah. wrong, and if I'm wrong, I'll admit it. So yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, th the reason I think the uh, the investments for China dropped, it's because they are not investing in the sort of what it used to be for the major projects. Yeah. Infra infrastructure takes a lot. This yeah. is why the BRI, you know, this new corridor from after the G20 ain't right. going to compete with that. Right. It's if nothing it but happens. hype. Yeah. If it even happens. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Because it might take a decade just to start moving. Right. And like I always said, who's going to fund it? And I can tell you from yeah. watching people work on highways yeah. here in the United yeah. States. They're still working like... on one that had five years ago. Mm -hmm. Why? I know. So, I know. I so know. that's that's what I think. I think uh, uh, because uh, uh, China is not involved now in the major, because those infrastructures yeah. are done. Yeah. You look at the airports, you look at the highways, bridges and all. That's yeah. done. So there is no, no. I think they shrewd with money. They're not wasting for sure. The funding just like that. So that's why we're seeing the drop. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it will be misinterpreted in the West differently. Yeah. But that's not about that. What is about? You know what is about? Mm. It's what's taking place right now as we speak in Morocco. Mm. There is a meeting of the IMF and World Bank together in yep. Morocco. Yep. And I know it's coincided with the earthquake, the tragic that just took place. But here is one of shocking news. I want you guys to know. The family, the royal family, you know, the king mm -hmm. in Morocco, end up allocating $14,000 for every person who lost his place. Oh, wow. 14000 What happened for us in Maui? $700. What a shame on, 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 on our government. Absolutely. So, and Morocco is not like this rich, massive, rich country. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. I mean, it's it's enough. It can manage whatever. But but for the king to step in forward, because that's what this leadership is all about. Mm -hmm. I really admire the king and appreciate him doing that for the needy people. They allocated, and I read on it, mm -hmm. 14000 for those who lost everything, mm -hmm. 7000 for whom I had little damage, yeah. and 3000 whom I their house still in place, but they are missing some. So mm -hmm. everybody's getting something. Yeah, so. wow. And this is where I see it's like when I looked at Maui. Oh, I know. Oh, and I the know. people are like, what the heck with the government? Yeah. And now you have this comedian Zelensky coming here and asking for money, and the government wants to give money? Forget about that. Oh my so. god. Well, yeah, we'll talk about We're that. Next talk about, yeah. I am I am Oh well, yeah. It's uh I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty mad about it. I, I think it's I think it's yeah. 
But the thing for Africa, just to to uh, uh, focus our conversation on the Africa one first here, mm -hmm. is because the issue of the Belt and Road, not the issue, but rather the venture of the Belt and Road Initiative. Absolutely. What Africans are subscribing to it. This is why this new corridor for the G20, it's nothing. But here is the key. I want yeah. you guys to get this. It was a strategic reason why G20 wanted the African Union uh, yes, to become a member. Absolutely. It's absolutely. not they care for Africans. They care less for Africans. Yeah. What they wanted is to, you know, conquer and divide and conquer absolutely. and so forth. Absolutely. That's what G20 wants. Because when you look at G20, who are the members? Yeah, you take only right. about five or six countries out from the global south. The rest yeah. is European and allies of the U.S. Yeah. So, I mean, what's left? So it behooves African Union to think twice before they agree to become in a permanent because G20 want them a, a permanent members. Well, because they don't care for them, they care for access to resources. Absolutely, absolutely. I and and me. I hope that if the Africans do decide the African nations, because yeah. there's a bunch of them that are, yeah, yeah, that, are a lot. that are part of it. Yeah. If they do decide that, I hope they negotiate shrewdly and they negotiate their own resources back. Yeah. Well, it's starting already with what we saw in Niger. Mm -hmm. Now it just there is another one in Congo. Yeah. Uh, you know, and those countries are rich in minerals. They, they are. are rich in natural they resources, are. but their people are not seeing. They are not prospering. They have not been prospering for the last 50, yeah. 60, 70, or even a century. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. It's not right. So, yeah. and this is where I see personally th this drop in uh, Chinese funding. It's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I don't see it as a negative thing. Yeah. What I see it as logical approach to projects are completed. Yeah. Well, the, the, China's not gonna just waste money. Yeah. And China's not gonna just hand money. Well, and and China is also dealing with its own stuff at home, right? Yes. So, yes. So there are issues the, at home they yes, need to deal with. They're, yeah. They're their own issues that they're dealing with at home, and you know the the amount that it slipped. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So, so what it seems like is that uh, so the Boston University Chinese Loans to Africa mm -hmm. database mm -hmm. estimated that Chinese lenders provided 170 billion dollars, which is a lot, to Africa from 2020. Or to, I'm sorry, 2000 to 2022. Yeah. So you know we also had the pandemic years. Yeah. In the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and also Africa is restructuring. Africa is shifting. We're seeing yeah. all the major coups happening right now. Yeah. And it seems to be like dominoes. Well, this one... is in one. Yeah. Go ahead. But the, I was going to say just uh, quick to this one is mm -hmm. a reaction to the new geopolitical landscape. Absolutely. It's the global order changing. And whether the West likes it or not, mm -hmm. it's fair complete. The world is moving forward. Yeah. You look at just this recent trip of the North Korean to Russia. You look at now the Secretary of Defense, the Russian, Choi Goy. Mm -hmm. in Iran, you know. Yeah. All oh, yeah. I can see now, I can see the emergence of an alliance between four countries, Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran. Yep. Well, who's going to dare to... Ch <laughs> they are all militarily capable. Yeah. So, Africa is seeing where is the win which winner, which side is the winner here. Right. That's what they decided right. on. And it's about time. It is. It's about it is. time for Africa. And, and you see a lot of the coups or yeah. re whatever, re rebellion, whatever yeah. it is you want to call them, right? Mm -hmm. You see a lot of them having been planned more or less for a very long time. You know, these people, they they played the long game. And uh -huh. now that they are watching, because I do, I do think that it's true that, you know, even though the loans are less, it's not much less than a billion. Yeah. Right? So I think, I think, uh, what is it? Yeah, and the other thing is the interest charged on it. Yeah, far, far, far different than what the IMF and the World Bank are doing. We all look at yeah. what happened to Argentina, oh, uh, Sri Lanka, yeah, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka recently. Yeah. I'm even last now year? more concerned that they're gonna, uh, they, IMF and World mm -hmm. Bank, wants to give Morocco about a billion and a half. I don't know. I hope they don't take it. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I, I personally hope that countries don't take IMF loans. Yeah. If you look at the history of IMF loans, and if you guys don't know much about the IMF yeah. and their loans yeah. and what they end up doing to the countries who take those loans, I yeah. mean, some, some countries, they 
and, and the thing is, you know, they 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 know ahead of time that they can't pay this back. Right. They mm -hmm. know ahead of time what the amount that the loan is, the loan is yeah. and the amount that the interest rate is. They know that they're not going to be able to pay it back. And yet they go for they it. They go for well, it. Argentinians signed the first one in the 80s. Yeah. In the 80s. I remember it. And they're still dealing with the consequences. And yet this upcoming yeah. uh, candidate for president wants to reuse the u.s dollar and it's ridiculous well, it's but, crazy. but there's a reason right so there's de-dollarization across yeah. the globe and the fact is that no country is just going to sit and let that oh, happen no, no. the united states isn't going to sit and let de-dollarization happen and so you're seeing the u.s fight back now um is it too late I probably think so. yes i think i so. think i think it is hard to question that it's too late, yeah. but the U.S. is trying now to do that. So we will see more candidates in other countries saying, "Let's use the, the U.S. dollar, dollar. So they can get support from the U.S. to right. for an election." Those are for personal ambitions. Oh yeah, I called the guy in Malay. His name is Javier Malay. I call him a stoop. Like, that's I what think it that's is. What the, the word <laughs> yeah. is for that? that Absolutely. I, I won't sugarcoat it. You know, and I'll be happy to challenge him on it because mm -hmm. the ideas he's coming. He's he has an economic background. I looked him up and checked and all that. Uh, yeah, but but what he's coming up with as far as the policies, they just don't make yeah. any sense. And we all know why, because the BRICS has just admitted Argentina. Yeah. Yeah. That, so that's why I always say nothing happens in a vacuum. Absolutely. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Yep. So nothing all of a sudden, the moment that Argentina has been admitted to BRICS, this guy emerged on the scene. Yep. I mean, come what on. What a surprise. Yeah. Wow. That's good. Totally happen, so. random, I'm sure. And, and and same thing that happened now with Africa. With Africa emerging, uh, sort of, they wanted to be done with. Uh, yeah. I remember we did the uh, we did the uh, show on when we had the, on the thumbnail. Uh, France out, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I know it's not about the word out; it's about the end of colonialism. Right. We just put that title on the thumbnail. But yeah. what we meant by that is the idea of Africa is done with this colonialism yeah. mindset. That good, yeah, good, yeah. And they're not benefiting from their resources, and right. they have plenty. And this is where I see the yeah. the young leadership now in Africa. It's kind of wanted to move into. I just hope. Yeah. And here is why, where my fear. I hope they don't get corrupted as well because I hope so power, too. Yeah. absolute power corrupts, as you yeah. know. I hope they get their head together and yeah. think for the well being of the citizens. Right. They will be remembered forever in history yeah. as the one who changed the course of history in Africa. Yeah. This is why I said about if King Charles wants to be remembered for something good, right. here is an opportunity. Yeah, because I, I, I was, we always used to say in the military, there's one saying in the military, a hard the right and easy wrong. It is easy to do the wrong thing. Yeah, it is hard to do the right thing. It is. So for King Charles, yeah, you King mm -hmm. Charles, if you're watching this respectfully, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to do the right thing, return yeah. the stolen gold to India. Return the stolen diamonds and all that to African countries. Uh, there's also some resources I found that were stolen from Indonesia, from Malaysia, one of those. Then Venezuela, the gold that belongs to Venezuela. Mm -hmm. You know, you do the right thing. Yeah. Return it. You'll be remembered forever. Absolutely. I And I actually love that that's what, I, I love that that's what you're saying because that really, if there was one thing that could yeah. probably make the world a better place right now, yeah. it's the redistribution of, of wealth. wealth. That is because absolutely during, correct. One of the things that isn't talked about very often, but it is the um, more or less the largest wealth transfer in recorded history that yeah. happened over the years that we were locked in our houses uh, and people weren't paying attention to that wealth transfer, but we're paying attention now because the wealth has left the wealth has left the average person, especially here That's in true. the United States. And so we're watching that in real time. Yeah. And it is the number one thing that would make the world a better place yeah. is redistribute that wealth and redistribute those resources. Well, for Africa, just to highlight, uh, we, we close this before we move mm -hmm. to the next chapter. Uh, the next chapter. Uh, I'm thinking like in, in at the university. What's yeah. the next chapter? <laughs> so the, the next, next chapter topic. In the world in drama. The world. <laughs> The next time. Speaking of chapter, did you know I started the course on yes. Tuesday? Yes. Oh, By the way, thank guys, you. I started it. 
Yep. Yeah. So David is teaching the course. Um, oh, I, yeah. because it has started, we're still offering 20% off. It is geopoliticsandconflict.com slash yeah. US. David is teaching a course on how the US government actually works, not how people think it works, <laughs> but how it actually works. Yeah. And check it out if you guys want to jump into that course. David's teaching it live. He's taking questions at the end of every class. And it's going on for the next month and a half. Yeah. And I, by the way, I missed the last one because I didn't see the questions on the screen. So I am hoping to fix that. Yes, one guys, if of you course, if you were if you're in the course and you have questions, please email them to us or put them in our discord. So we also have a discord that yeah. David jumps on a yeah. lot. I jump on every so often and you guys can talk to each other. You guys can talk to each other in a safe space where you can bring ideas and information to the table and I get your questions answered. Uh, so check it out. That's also part of the course. Yeah. So here's the conclusion for this. One thing I want you guys to understand about this uh, uh, China's investments in Africa. The decline in these loans does not mean, it does not mean that China is no more engaged in Africa. No. China, Africans want the Chinese over there. And that yeah. is why the spending so far, what how much China spent over $170 billion since 2002 to 2022, that's the span of almost what 20 years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that includes during the time when China launched the BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative, yeah. which many countries in Africa wants to to yeah. not wants to, they already signed up for it. I even find out recently that Morocco has signed up to an agreement with Russia. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. Very interesting regarding the grain, yeah. believe it or not. So, well, so it's grain, very interesting. Grain is a hot topic. Yeah. So I guess let's dive into our next topic because sure. it has to do with grain. So that is that Poland will no longer arm Ukraine. As Ukraine's most staunch supporter outside of the United States, which has funneled billions and billions of dollars to it, Poland has been one of the most outspoken supporters of Ukraine. And now they've had enough. Would you like to hear what the Polish prime minister said about Ukraine? Sure. Mateusz, so, right? Uh, President Mateusz Andrzej Duda. Uh, that's the president. The yes. prime minister is Mateusz Morawiecki. Oh, yes. yeah. uh, Pol the Polish president. Right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, on Tuesday in New York, while he was attending the UN, uh -huh. he said, quote, Ukraine is behaving like a drowning person clinging to everything he can. But we have the right to defend ourselves against harm being done to us. Wow. That's that's, that's strong. That's a message right there. You know? Well, actually, just for you guys to know, you know, we were in Poland a few months ago yep. and we kind of saw tanks on the ground and, and Polish people weren't that happy or excited about what their government is embarking yeah. on. Speaking of porn, before I forget, next week we're going to have a guest who knows very, very great deal about, about Poland. So we'll let you know about that. Uh, so the idea has always been, okay, and, and, and Polish people were like just questioning the judgments yeah. of their yeah. governments. Here you are giving all these resources to Ukrainians yeah. at the expense of a Polish citizens is no different than what we we are having here in the US. Yeah. Did you not find out that yesterday the feds went ahead to the border between mm -hmm. Texas and yeah and Mexico, yeah, Mexico yeah. and went ahead and cut off the barbed wires that the Texas put to block illegals from mm -hmm. basically the feds did that. Yeah. Biden administration did that. All of a sudden you see you know massive Wave. amount of yeah. people coming in and, and it's kind of okay well but they're being and and i guess this is more of a topic for rumble overall oh but yeah, yeah. yeah we can do it here and also guys we have a rumble we did a rumble live here is the link to it we're able to speak a little bit more freely on rumble so we can we, do this topic then. we can do yeah. that topic um but they're it, apparently they're being bussed yeah to other cities yeah and 300 dollars a week yeah at the yeah, expense yeah. of the American taxpayers. Right. So that's another topic we're going to get into. Um, but yes, Poland has taken more refugees than any other country. Yeah. Poland is the go-between yeah. between the rest of e or the rest of NATO and 
Ukraine. Ukraine, yeah. But here is the funny, not the funny thing, but put it put in my geopolitical analyst hat. Mm -hmm. I can tell you with a high probability the reason why the comedian President Zelensky mentioned at the UN speech. Yeah. You know what did he say? And yeah. I paraphrase here. He said, Well, Poland will be next. The Russians are gonna invade Poland. It was meant to stoke that fear in Poland, right. but also in a reaction to the Polish decision. Yeah. But here is what I found very interesting. It's the same statement that Mikhail Shakashvili, mm -hmm. who used to be the head of Georgia, said about Finland and Sweden. Yep. Soon Russia is going to invade Finland and Sweden. It's the same scenario. It did not happen. It did not. So, and this is where I think the comedian Zelensky is realizing mm -hmm. enough is enough, yeah. but Poland also is thinking about its own, and rightly so. Rightly so. This is not about just its citizens. Yeah. It's about its military structure. Absolutely. What Polish or Poland government wants to do, it, they wanted to strengthen their military. And here is the thing. Here is the shocker. This might shock you. Mm -hmm. Based on my understanding and whatever I know, if Poland focuses all its energy on its military, yeah. it will become one of the best in Europe. Oh, forget that's a, very interesting. Forget about Germany. Forget yeah, yeah. about the UK. Yeah. Well, I, I have relatives that were in the Polish yeah. military recently, young so, relatives. So it's the idea of, and this is where now you start to see why the Germans were pushing against Poland because they were pushing against Poland. They didn't want Poland to build its own military. Yeah. So because Germans, Germans have no sovereignty. Mm -hmm. We dictate to the Germans right, right. what to do and say. And we told the foreign minister, Anna, Annalena Burbach, to say, C is a dictator because yeah. we said that, which is ridiculous and stupid. Yeah, you know? and a bad move for them. It's, a it's bad so move bad for that anybody. you are asking China for help with the. Uh, I mean, yes. it just doesn't make yes. sense. Yes, you can say one thing and do the opposite. Right, and this is why Poland, I think, it's coming to grip with the reality. I agree. Now there are two other main issues that's going on with this. Mm -hmm. Now, the, I do not know for fact whether they are related or not. And I'm going to just say it out there and let you reach your conclusion. The two events are demonstrations in Prague yeah. and demonstrations in, in Magdea in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. I think it's a small city on the eastern side of Berlin. Between the two, yeah. but mainly the one in Prague, you know what they're asking for in addition to the resignation of the government? is for Czech Republic to leave NATO altogether. Yeah. I don't know if this has to do with it that Poland is seeing because Prague is just right there across yeah. the border. You know, you can take a, a, a train from Warsaw directly into Prague. I don't know. Yeah. If Poland's seeing that and start to think ahead, and, I, and I don't know. I, so there's an interesting phenomenon. So what we're hearing is the reason that this is happening yeah. is because uh, they Poland wants to basically protect its own, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a ton of Ukrainian grain that is being more or that less flooding, uh, flooding the neighboring countries because they can't get it any, they can't send it anywhere else. Anywhere, right? yeah. So it's flooding the neighboring countries and it's hurting the farmers the in locals. those countries. The it's locals. hurting. It's hurting the citizenry of those countries. Yeah. And so Poland and a couple of other countries said, nope, sorry, no Ukrainian grain, because it's it's just, it's just hurting our people and we cannot allow that to happen. Yeah. And so it's very interesting though, because you know the narrative with Ukraine has been, you know, we have to save Ukraine, but we're coming up on a year and a half, mm -hmm. right? So we're a year and a half. If it continues, we'll head towards two years, years. Yeah. of this conflict yeah and so other countries how long can they bear the burden of yeah. that well that's why you're seeing now ukraine even ukraine or even the narrative yeah the narrative in western some western capitals are now leaning more towards well we should start to consider negotiations yeah. with the russians and russians are saying mm, we'll see yeah. Because here's the thing. One statement by Olaf Scholz, 
He said, as precondition for negotiations, mm -hmm. Russia will have to return all the territory it took over. Forget about that. Yeah. Russia ain't going to turn back. Right. That territory is gone. And I am even leaning more towards for this settlement to be reached. Ukraine will have to be carved out. Yeah. And I will even go as far as saying that Poland might have its own eyes on the western right. side of Ukraine. Right. Because once that happens, Ukraine becomes a landlocked. Because once the yeah, Black Sea yeah, is done yeah, and, yeah. and all that. And so you're absolutely correct that this one has to do part of it with grain because 90% yeah. of the grain goes through Poland. Right. But at the same time, you get countries uh, in, in Europe. Actually, I, I get a list of the countries. Mm -hmm. Bulgaria, Hungary, Poland, Romania, and Slovakia. Those are all considered like yeah. sort of a transit, but their local farmers are being harmed. Absolutely. Economically speaking. Yep. And they said, well, forget about this. We can't. We can't. And rightly so. This is what a government ought to do. Right. You got to think for the welfare of your citizens. I, I have a lot of respect for the Polish government for doing this. Yeah. It is. it is. In fact, it's actually not unpopular at this no, point. No, no. Globally, it's, no, it's not, not unpopular. And I do have a lot of respect for the Polish for the Polish government for doing this. Yeah. For taking care of, because the entire time. So one of the most interesting things about this move is basically Poland is saying, Ukraine, you have been extremely ungrateful for the support that we have shown you and the support that we have given you. And you just seem to be asking for more and, and more. more and more. And where does it go? And where that's where a great question. We're gonna address that in the next topic because good. where does that go? Good, good. So um, so when Zelensky addressed the UN General Assembly. He said, alarmingly, some in Europe play out solidarity in a political theater, turning grain into a thriller. I wonder mm. who they, I wonder who's talking about. They yeah. may seem to play their own roles. In fact, they're helping set the stage for a Moscow actor. So you can see the narrative has been provided mm. for him to read. Yeah. First of all, there is no way he can write stuff like that. No, no. I guarantee you that. Yeah. And second thing. Did you guys know that when he started his speech at the UN, half of the room left? Yeah. That's a really important thing. Guys, that's a really yeah, important left. thing. Yeah, I had a, I had a picture somewhere uh, on my tweet. I wish I would have kept it, but half of the room left. Yeah. It's because they're saying, well, to me it was the idea of they didn't want to listen to nonsense, basically. Well, that's, it's the same rhetoric. Yeah. There's only so much, much you, you can, can do. It's been the same rhetoric, the same yeah. narrative for a year and a half, right? And and you know, I'm I'm not advocating for Russia, okay? Because you know, Russian aggression did happen. There are a lot of people. Yeah, but dead, Russian aggression and it's not okay. Yeah, but I okay? challenge you on this. Russian aggression happened because of a reaction I to agree. NATO's expanding all the way. They promised. Right. 1991, after the disintegration of Soviet Union, yep. James Becker, the former Secretary of State, went to Moscow mm -hmm. in St. Catherine at the halls there. And he mm -hmm. said, we promise you that NATO, we will not expand an inch yeah. eastward. What did we end up doing? Three, Three expansions. Yeah, absolutely. 2000, uh, 1998, nine, 2004, and 2000. Seven. Yeah. And of course, with 2014, yeah. what happened? That's where the right. so so it's kind of Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know some's gonna say what well, the aggression. I don't see it that way. Right. I understand the 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 destructions that is happening. Yeah. I feel for the Ukrainian people because those are the ones that end up in suffering. Yeah. But war is not pretty. War in war, you don't distinguish between this and that. When yeah. you fire whatever. Whomever end up being there is destroyed. Yeah. Be it an old, an elderly, or be it a young kid. Yeah. You know, as sad as it is, it's sad reality. But also, what we do not want to admit is the fact as to what triggers what this. triggered it. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with you. So what I'm saying is, I don't, I don't condone war. Yeah. Of any kind. Of course. Yeah. I just don't. 
I think that it's horrific and the loss of life is horrible. But you are absolutely right. The narrative has always, ha the narrative has started as, well, Russia started this. But yeah. even I, so on Rumble, I showed a video yesterday of yeah. Jen Stoltenberg talking about what yes. actually did start it. So if you guys want to check that out, check out our Rumble. I think I still have the, yeah. the link up. But of Jen Stoltenberg saying saying that the reason that this started is because Russia said NATO, who has stated that they are anti-Russia, okay? Yeah. NATO's whole purpose is that they're anti-Russia, that NATO not expand to their doorstep. Yeah. If somebody who has stated that they are against you moves to the front of your house, and stands there, what would you do? Yeah, you're right. Would you just say, okay, this person who who is who is against me or who hates me yeah. is just gonna stand in front of my house and I'm gonna be okay with it? Be okay with that. You're not. That's that's insanity to think that that's the case. So do I think war is wrong in every single circumstance? Yes, yes I course. personally do. Yeah. But it is it is absolutely it is it is wrong to not acknowledge what the series of events were that led to yeah. this. Well, that's why it will be make more, it make more sense to invest in peace than right. invest in war. Yes. It's less costly. Absolutely. But sometimes throughout history, it is through war that things had to be settled. Yeah. And I think this is where the West is not thinking far, far ahead that they are edging closer to that red line where it will be no point of return. Well, That's the way I see so it. one of the things, I, and I wanted to bring this up as its own topic, but yeah. there's there's a lot going on. So we brought, or I'm bringing this up here. Yeah, there's a conversation now in Washington among generals that this is a long haul war. <laughs> and remember how we were talking about yeah. that, right? We yeah. were talking about, oh, you know, th they're planning this actually as you know, we, we left Afghanistan, we need a new place to send all of our arms because if we're not at war with anybody, where no does our military industrial complex, Com yeah. where are they going to, where are they going to sell their weapons to, right? If That's no true. one's at war, where, you know, are they going to decide that they're going to be infrastructure builders? Or are they going <laughs> to change their industry? Probably not. Right. So, so the, the conversation is now that this is going to become a long haul war. And yeah. the only people who can decide that is the populations of the countries involved. Oh, yeah. Let me, I found the picture here just to share it oh, with sure. you guys quickly. Uh, just take a look here. And uh, uh, there's not much to see to it, but it's still, it's, it's hard to oh, see. Let me see. Uh, I don't know how to make it bigger. Yeah. Um, somebody put a comment for me about, I need to learn how to do the picture clear. <laughs> okay. Uh, here, you. wait, let me see if but I can anyway, it bigger here. Anyway, my, my point on this is you can see most of the seats are empty because people, scroll up a little bit, David up. Yeah. Scroll up just a bit so we can see more of the, of the image. Uh, yeah, yeah. Perfect. See, look at all this. Yeah. All this sits here wow. are empty, but wow. but the, but just it just to highlight to the idea of the the narrative or the script it has been presented, but again we all know why. Right. So, right. all right, let's move on to our next topic. All right, so our next topic is that Zelensky is back in town today uh, and back in country. He's uh, not, you know, he's he's not where we are, but uh, um, but yes, he's back in Washington. And he is expected to meet with President Joe Biden. And the big ticket item here is that right now, um, you know, I am not Republican or Democrat. And I, I want to make that clear from the very beginning. But more or less, the Democrats are saying, the Biden presidency is saying, we need to send $24 billion more to Ukraine. Um, you know, in aid, right? In yeah. humanitarian aid, in in support, in war support, in aid, and uh, so the um, Republicans basically are saying no, <laughs> About to, nope, yeah. we're not interested in that. So I'm not a fan of Maca uh, McCarthy, uh, but basically what he's saying is we would like for there to be oversight. We'd like to know where the money has actually gone 
because right now, you know, there, there have been a lot of scandals, lots of scandals where Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian officials yeah. have bought multi-million dollar mansions, have a drive around in luxury sports cars, buy mansions for their children. Their kids are posting their cars on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, this is, and, and we would be, we would be honestly naive to think that to think yeah. that that's not our money out there buying that that official their mansion right yeah and and so you know where where do people the people who want to give ukraine more money where do they think it's going it's going yeah because, and this is why mccarthy is pushing back right and i think republicans saying enough is enough and they're not gonna i don't think so they're gonna support it I, I, and rightly so yeah uh, w w w we don't, it's, yeah. it's beyond, you know, you don't mind uh, giving a helping hand, but yeah. uh, at some point you see enough is enough. And that's the thing. Enough so, uh, so Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, uh, who is on the other side, uh. chimed in and said, and with no Ukraine funding, the proposed, okay, this actually really bothers me that he says this. Yeah. And with no Ukraine funding, the proposal is an insult to Ukraine and a gift to Putin. I cannot think of a worse welcome for Zelensky who visits us this week than this house proposal, which ignores Ukraine entirely. A worse welcome for Zelensky? Yeah. How many times has he been here asking for more money? What do you mean a yeah. worse welcome for him? It's not our job to welcome him. Yeah, and yet the American peoples are suffering. So and the representative, the they don't care. If, if, because they're the amount of our congress people who are millionaires or one more yeah yeah is almost yeah. all of them i just find out elizabeth warren yeah and i remember her when she was elected uh-huh you know you know what her wealth is it's 73 million dollars you know what the salary of a senator is yep. about 170 thousand dollars really yeah you mean you can't get sudden, 70 something million dollars yeah. from a hundred thousand dollar a year job no really in a matter of nine years but don't worry she wants to make sure that you don't get any bitcoin Bigger. yeah oh she's right they're all corrupted oh. let's say it's straightforward our system is corrupted yeah. to the core until yeah. the american people wake up to yeah. understand this reality nothing's going to change right like i always say both parties yeah are two faces of the same coin i agree this I agree. is why no third party will ever succeed in this system yeah basically tell you tear things down yeah. and rebuild accordingly absolutely that's the way i see absolutely. it absolutely so. so the one thing the the there so like i said i'm not republican but there are some things that parties, in fact, I'm going to say it this way. Yeah. Instead of identifying with either party, I identify with the things that make sense in either party. Yeah. Both parties have things that make sense and both parties have things oh, yeah. that do yeah. not yeah, make sense sure. at all. Yeah. And so instead of being one side or, an, or the other, why can't we just look at what's good policy? That would work. And yeah. choose that. Yeah. So the one person, sorry, David, I, no, it's I'm right. just like super heated it's about okay. this. The one person that I think made any sense here yeah. is Senator Rand Paul, who I really respect. I really respect Rand Paul. He said, it's as if no one has noticed that we have no extra money to send to Ukraine. Dang. He hmm. pointed out that our deficit this year will exceed $1.5 trillion borrowing money from China to send it to Ukraine, Ukraine. makes no sense. Yeah, he's right. And, and to me, the big shocker, you know what? The big shocker out of all this that came mm. as statements from none other than the clown Bojo, Boris Johnson. Really? Of, of, oh, what yeah. did Bojo You know say? what he said? What? Which would shock you. You know, he said, he said mm. that World War II yeah. was won because of Ukraine. What? That's what he said. Yeah. And I'll I'll share the screen what? with you guys to see it with your own eyes. No. Which to me, yeah, that's how stupid what? one can get. Yeah. Here, here's the screen here. Or manipulative, right? It, it's manipulation. Yeah. See this sentence here at the top? You can yeah. see it here. I'm Boris gonna Johnson, read it. Yeah. Boris Johnson said, and I quote here: Boris Johnson said that the West won World War II 
with the help of Ukraine. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it shows you how not only dumb and stupid uh, some British politicians have become what? recently, but this is a reflection. This is to me no a reflection of the leadership, the decline in leadership yeah. in the West. You know, I remember when Henry Kissinger, I was a kid at the time, but even though the atrocities he advocated for, how can we forget what took place in Vietnam and Cambodia? Oh, he was the, the advice of Henry Kissinger. But you give him a credit, yeah. not on that side, of course, I will never do that. But you give him credit in someone who understood the dynamics of global geopolitics, uh, yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. He had a good reading of the geopolitical landscape and understood mm -hmm. because he was for him for because of his understanding that he said you better yeah. make a deal with china now before it be too late yeah that's how he opened up so yeah. do you see any western leaders these days including ours no exception no i don't see any that's why who are you gonna vote for there is nobody to vote for yeah you look at the west senator rand paul if That's he run for vote, president, yeah. I'll consider, but yeah. he's not going to run. He had to right. be affiliated with one party or another. Right. Because the independent party right. will not make it here. The system will not allow it. Yeah. Both parties, just FYI, if you happen to be an American watching this, both parties, the Republicans and Democrats, mm -hmm. do agree behind closed doors. Yeah. On things, yeah. That is how we're going to contain the system. Right. The both of them been controlling the process, the political process in the U.S. for the last 150 years. And that's why the government course is very important. I do talk about that stuff yep. in more detail. So, so I, David, I, to me, this is maybe one of the most important things that we could possibly be covering Yeah, is this situation. I want to bring one more thing to the table because, um, so uh, Fox Business yeah. broke a story, basically, that Zelensky has been meeting in New York mm -hmm. with lead banks, hedge funds, and private investors. So apparently, this is what Fox News said, the meeting was put together by J.P. Morgan. Oh. And he met, Zelensky met privately with Larry Fink oh. from BlackRock. Uh, and that other people who were invited included William Ackerman, the head of hedge fund Pershing Square, uh, Pershing Square Capital, sorry, mm -hmm. Ken Griffin, um, Michael Bloomberg, uh, Philip Hildebrand, mm -hmm. and Eric Schmidt, former CEO of yeah, Google. Google. So I... I really want to, I, you know, like I said, Fox news and, and both all the news sources, you got to take with a grain of salt. Right. So I'm putting that out there also, but I think it's worth mentioning that, uh, that this was something that got, um, this is something that, that very likely happened. Yeah. And we all know why. Right. Yeah. Because already, did you know, did you know that, uh, and again, I do have a record for it. Mm -hmm. Did you know that BlackRock has invested about $430 billion in the Chinese military? Mm, wow. I actually didn't know that. Well, you know, uh, you know yeah. not a lot of people will even know about that. Well, but Black it's hidden in plain sight, right? Like yes, none of this is classified. Yeah. No, I mean, no, it's not classified. Fox uh, Business broke this, right? About, yeah, that's so correct. So this is, this is known yeah. information. But this is where you realize when will Americans wake up? But again, yeah. average Joe, average Jane here right. worries about what's for dinner. They're not right. going to worry about it, it. You know, it just those kind of and, and this gives the opportunity to policy makers and yeah. politicians and corrupted people in the government to do whatever yeah. you know i mean i mean even our president he's clueless about oh absolutely absolutely it's clueless you know honestly in its own right this is this is a bit of like real talk but it's hard to live here now because there's so much wrong right so we know that other countries won't take our meat we know no. that other countries have banned the use of a lot of food additives that we have that that are still okay somehow here yeah. right 
we know that our, our food system is failing, our healthcare system is failing, and it's so expensive that even if you could, even if you wanted to go get care there, yeah. it's so expensive that it's more or less bankrupting the country. You know, so it, it our stuff like Hawaii happens and then the government doesn't take care of those people or the, the spill, the chemical spill that happened in Ohio, you know, those people, I think it was, it was only 4,000 people that were affected. Those people I think are still there and the sure. water is still undrinkable from what I understand. Right. So there's, there, yeah. it's hard to live in a place where it, it really feels mm. like your government really isn't taking care of you and allowing <laughs> corporate interests more or less yeah. to make life terrible for people well, here. That's why the government is in incompetent. It would be fair to say it. Our government is incompetent. And that's the thing about if, if the government wanted to take care of Ukraine and we had prosperity and more money than we knew what to do with, we, we the, the budget deficit or the, the, um, yeah, budget deficit wasn't $1.5 trillion this yeah. this year alone. If that wasn't the case, I would say, great, take care, whatever needs to happen. But that's not what's happening here. Yeah. Yeah. It's selling our future. It's selling our lives. And, you know, to the to the Polish government's credit, they're not doing that to their people. They're not, not selling out their people. For... Well, it, it, maybe it's after the damage has already been done. Maybe. So That's let's, true. Let, we'll say it's straightforward because most Europeans, you take one exception to my knowledge based on what I've read and research and yeah. all, one exception it has to do with Hungary. Yeah. Viktor Orban, the prime minister, that guy pushed mm -hmm. back against Euro, the EU and against the funding for Ukraine yeah. because he was thinking about the welfare of his people. The rest of them in Europe. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. None of them. Because, uh, you know, you think about the Richie Sonak for prime minister of England. The guy is so incompetent. Yeah. You think about Olaf Scholz, the chancellor. The guy is so weak. You think about even this. Uh, we, everybody was under the wrong impression or the right impression that it's gonna, she's going to be great. Georgia Meloni. Oh, Turns yeah. out to be a fraud. Yeah. She is a fraud. Mm -hmm. and, and then Macron, then you get the idea. So yeah. all of Western leadership, incompetent. Yeah. Plain and simple. So, all right, let's move on to the last topic of the day. Azerbaijan launches oh. a major ground operation that has now been halted, but let's take a dive into what yeah. actually happened in that situation. Well, that part of the world is very complicated. First of all, mm -hmm. you, you're going to have to get into the history. I, I, we're not going to do this here because this <laughs> takes too long. We need a, you need a minimum of one hour. Yeah. Just to tackle the history. Well, I'm sure a lesson. minimum. I'm sure a minimum of one hour. Of one hour, yeah. So, But the bottom line is you have to go back to 1838. Mm -hmm. That's when the, the uh, I think, a treaty of called Kolonak, if I'm not mistaken. I got the word here. But, mm -hmm. uh, between the Soviet Union back then. Uh, but, yes, but yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To fast forward to, regional, uh, to uh, contemporary time, you're looking at the 20th century when the conflict started back in 1988. Mm -hmm. That's when it started back then. And of course, this has to do with Azerbaijan and Armenia, both former Soviet enclaves. You know, Armenia claiming that there's a territory in Azerbaijan that belongs to Armenia. Mm -hmm. Russia, now the current Russian Federation, has a treaty with Armenia, yeah. but also has deals with Azerbaijan. Turkey, of course, will support Azerbaijan, but not Armenia given the history what took place Jeez. <laughs> it's too complicated Jeez. then you add another country to the mix yeah which is iran mm -hmm. and iran has already threatened to step in if forces crossed into armenian territory mm -hmm. so there is a lot of complicated history yeah but that's not the question where it is exactly the question is how this all of sudden emerged yep. absolutely and if it is who was behind it and how right so that's that's the key question we need to understand because this this uh, uh, Nagorno Karabakh it's called mm -hmm. Nagorno Karabakh region that's been going back and forth. Yeah, and that's why just yesterday Arbej uh, Azerbaijan decided to uh, lay down the weapons and that's it. Then we don't know three months from now the the the, the clashes could erupt again yeah. and only in that part because. As I, as I said, Armenia is saying to Azerbaijan, you need to turn over this to us. Yeah. Well, both of them were Russians in clay. 
So, and we can right. see why who will benefit from. Because remember, Azerbaijan and all that region, they are also rich in natural resources. Yes. So I was actually going to bring that up. Yeah. So oil prices actually rose because of this. Oh, yeah. So we're we're actually watching a very interesting, um, you know, uh, Saudi Arabia, Russia, now this have a squeeze on on the oil market, basically. Right. So diesel, yeah. oil, natural gas. So they there's a squeeze on it. Right. So it's interesting to me because we're the ones who end up suffering from that. So we paid right, the gas pump. We paid yeah. the gas pump which is, um, it's absolute insanity, but we're the ones who suffer for that. Right. Yeah. So I wonder, interestingly enough, as the world is paying attention to Ukraine and Russia and all of Something these other else. things, these little conflicts like this erupting, what is that? You know, because here's the thing uh, to think as an analyst, you have to look at it. What will be the objective of instigating a conflict in a certain region? Yep. Once you find out, for example, in this case of Russia, because Russia has a treaty with Armenia, mm -hmm. which means when you have a treaty in this case that Russia can step in and defend. Yeah. But also Russia has also good relations with Azerbaijan. Yeah. You know, Israel has a good relations with Azerbaijan. So, so it becomes the question of well, who will benefit from pulling more of Russian resources yeah. into Armenian conflict in right. addition to Ukraine? So right. I leave that to your imagination. Well, mm -hmm. and it's interesting. One of the other things that we talked about did did we? Ta I think we talked about this yesterday on Rumble yeah. about the fact that uh, Ukraine. I don't actually. I don't know whether we covered it on Rumble or not, but yeah. that, oh, we did, we did, that Ukraine is uh, maybe responsible. So CNN did an article that Ukraine is maybe responsible for an attack in Sudan. Yeah, yeah. And well, well, Ukraine go all the way. It Sudan. was, that just it's very, make sense. well, but, you know, apparently the, there's some evidence and, you know, all of that, all of that, right? But I was like, that's, that's do a you know, wild claim. Do you know how good the government can doctrine pictures? I uh, yes. Yeah, I'm that's why sure I don't, that's you know, not new. for stuff like that. No, the question because of of the link of saying right. you know, let alone where it was coming from. Right. So that's why you always you always have to think twice about mm -hmm. what you're reading, and uh, you know always counter check that information Absolutely. to make sure. And if it smells fishy, you then know, trust take, a, your right, instinct. take a look at that. Yeah. So there's some interesting, there's some interesting smaller, yeah. random, yeah. random seeming things that are happening right now in the world. Yeah. yeah, that's the reason for why this, this all of sudden, Azerbaijan and Armenia's conflict all of a sudden to the forefront. Hmm. Yeah, why? Makes you just why wonder, just all of a sudden. Yeah. And and they just had a problem about eight months ago, mm -hmm. I recall, because I was always. I read a little bit here and there. I mean, I know a little bit the history of it from way back, mm -hmm. back to the 1838. Yeah. And uh, it's a complicated. Yeah. This is why we never understood. We, uh, the United States, especially when it comes down to foreign policy, we never understood the complexities of the Middle East, for example. Yeah. That's why we never get it. Yeah. We never get it. You know, I, I argue the, against the invasion of right because I said you, you, the history yeah. of that part of the world is so complicated that you guys... Just think, well, Mr. O, we're going to go and liberate Baghdad. I said, you don't get it. Yeah. You don't get it. This is not about liberating Baghdad. You don't understand the the complexities of the historical facts that took place over a thousand years yeah. and still resonating today yeah. in that part of the world. So you're thinking, I'm going to just walk in and it's the same mistake we made in Afghanistan yeah. when oh, yeah. many civilizations prior to us tried, including the Russians. Yeah, tried to conquer Afghanistan and mm. they couldn't. Yeah. Because you would not be able to conquer Afghanistan. It has always been known as mm. the graveyard of the empire. Yep. For a reason he was given that name. Even Alexander the Great couldn't make it there. He knew. Yeah. So it's kind of what makes us so arrogant thinking, oh, we got bombers and all that stuff. Well, we couldn't even defeat. Well, and so here's the question, yeah. though, David, because yeah. speaking to that, my question for you is, you know, we have uh, right now we're starting to hear about Ukraine becoming potentially a long war. Yeah. 
Afghanistan was 20 years. Yeah. And so I wonder if exactly what you're talking about, I wonder if the intention wasn't to win. Well, it was never there. But at the same time, you I see don't see what I'm saying. I, yeah, I don't see it going for 20 years. Oh, the, I hope the, I hope Ukraine the, the, the Russians won't let what it. I mean in is Afghanistan even. Oh, yeah. Going in was the intention actually to win. And looking at the history of US conflicts going all the way back since World War II. Yeah. What have we won? None. None. Except for World War II. But even it, World War II with the help of with the help of the Russians, Russians. man. I, you know, the West would not never admit to that. No, and yeah. so you know, my my grandparents, uh, my grandparents and my uncles, unfortunately, are buried in yeah. a, a graveyard in Poland, and um, and there are graves to Russian soldiers there. There's there are graves to Polish soldiers and graves to Russian soldiers from World War Two. I'm thinking if I still have the picture. Oh, you might. Oh, you might still I'm have the picture. Sure. That I would doubt, be wonderful. If it. not, maybe may, may one of us maybe has it still. Yeah, somewhere. Um. And so, you know, for, for Bojo even to say that... No, he's he's an idiot. I'll, yeah. I'll say, sorry. usually I don't like to use that term. He's an idiot for saying something that is contradict what history was all about. Yeah. And that's right there. It shows you, you know, let alone the diplomatic uh, uh, protocol for, you know, stating something like this that really defies logic yeah. when historical facts suggest otherwise. Right. And that's to me, it's like, you know... Well, and that's insulting also yeah, just, i mean yeah. i honestly that that's like that's deeply insulting and heartbreaking yeah to well, to try and especially manipulate something as as horrific as world war 2 yeah and, well he was never was done? he was never competent to begin with well that's why he got fired so uh, uh it, but it was the british decision to vote for him yeah. again it's their country they can decide uh, no, I don't have pictures because here's the oh. reason. I usually don't like taking pictures. Yeah, yeah, it, especially so, in cemetery. I, I understand. I understand. That, so, but that's what it was. So the idea of uh, uh, just to put this uh, to summarize it for you guys mm -hmm. to put this in perspective, this Ar Azerbaijan Armenia conflict, it's it's hit and miss, and it's gonna come and go. Mm -hmm. But come and go, it comes and goes for strategic reason by some interest parties right, right. that's the whole reason now all of as i said earlier they decided to lay down the arm and that's it yeah we we might hear the same in the next four months or yeah, so, so absolutely uh, absolutely but the history of that part of the world is very complicated yeah very so so well guys we hope you find this very informative and we look forward to seeing you next time as always prepare yourself for changing world order till next time bye bye